Welcome to Dream Chasers Radio. I am Yaya Diamond, your host, and I am so happy that you're here. It is such a wonderful day. Yeah, I know you finished that for me, didn't you? Because you know I was going to say it because it really is. I have an author on the show today, and I am so happy that Nassim is here. Welcome to the show. Hi, thank you. Thank you. Thank for, you. Did I say your name here. right? Yeah, it's Nassim Odin, my <laughs> friend. Here. <laughs> you guys, I am working on that. I am getting better with saying people's names because I really, really love my guests. Nassim, thank you so much for being here. And thank you, thank you. uh you're an author, to... right? Oh, thank you. Uh, I'm I sorry. am a new author. <laughs> you're a new author? Okay, yes. okay. We got to get into this. We got to get into this. How did you know you were going to be an author? Oh, uh, well, actually, I had never thought that I would write a no- novel, but uh, last year during COVID pandemic, mm. uh, we were all in lockdown and I was uh, just browsing on internet, uh, some books on Amazon, mm. and I come across uh, a few novel options and I start browsing and reading the verbs. And then I got interested. I said, why not? I, am, I have a time. I could write a novel. And then there was a story in my mind, actually, for a long time back, but I never thought that I would write it so soon. I was thinking that once I get retired, then I will assemble it and write it. But then I thought that it might be too late. (laughs) (laughs) So it's better to start writing and see how it goes. But I saw that people were having a lot of uh, sci-fi trilogies. And Mm -hmm. so from very beginning, I thought that uh, actually, I planned that I will write a sci-fi trilogy, and the book should be available uh, soon, so like mm. like a like a month, like a gap of a month. Awesome, awesome! You know, so many people have changed their minds, changed their careers, changed their focus during COVID, and it, it you know it has changed the structure of the way we live life today as well. It, it even affects all the people that are living in, in, in you know in different countries as well. I mean, so you wrote your book, you thought it was too late, it's not too late, and now you you're, you're coming out. How does that make you feel? Well, uh, it was very troublesome exercise. First of all, I don't have any experience in writing uh, literature. Mm. I, I'm a scientist, basically, scientist and engineer. So I write research papers, but I don't, I never thought that I would write, <laughs> write something, a novel. Mm-hmm. So I realized that I have a limitations and uh, uh, I took some online online courses in writing mm. like uh, maybe you you know about mr he's a novelist uh, mr david Farland. okay he he's offering an online course so i i took that online course uh, attended i mean i i i watched his videos uh, mm-hmm. on how to write a novel and also uh, there is a screenwriter uh, mr john truby Mm-hmm. He's very famous. He also wrote a book on the anatomy of the story. So I also took uh, his, li- uh, I mean, I, I watched his uh, lectures on writing the science fiction. Mm-hmm. And yeah, that seems a pretty, pretty good idea to me that how I can frame the novel, even though mm. I am not a favorite reader. And then uh, Mr. John Truby is also offering a blockbuster software in which you can enter the data, the characters, and their sketches, and it gives you an idea that whether they all fit into each other or not. Right. So yeah, I start from there, but you understand that it, I, I thought about writing last year in September 2020, and it's almost like an year, <laughs> almost like every day I was doing something uh, in this context. Wow. Wow. So I love what you did. Because you knew you had limitations, you went to someone who actually could help you with those limitations. A lot of times we don't do that. You know, oh, well, we'll get around it. I I can get around it, you know. But you didn't do that. You said, no, I'm going to go ahead and, and learn some more and do this. And so you have a sci-fi novel out. Tell me about that. Okay, actually, uh, writing a sci-fi novel is not like writing a romance or writing mm. some kind of uh, other story, uh, because uh, in science fiction, uh, 
there are a lot of elements involved. First, there's a science, then there's a story, then there's a world building, and the world building, especially of some other planet which we haven't seen. Mm -hmm. So I had an idea that I weave into my novel something, a mythology, uh, something like an ancient uh, medieval culture, or uh, also something uh, which we can learn from after reading everything. Mm -hmm. that, uh, what is the whole gist of the story is. Huh? So <laughs> I'm still writing my third book and you know, third book is quite complex. It's uh, giving me a hard time. But yeah. anyway, so the story was also uh, it was about a disease uh, oh. which actually appeared in a uh, alien planet. Mm -hmm. But actually the origin of disease is Earth based. I got the idea during the COVID that uh, that <laughs> why the aliens are not coming to us. Maybe they got the disease. <laughs> <laughs> right? Wow. So the protagonist, actually, he went to the alien planet where he found that they are struggling with an Earth-based disease. Mm. And the protagonist offered that he can go back to Earth and bring the cure. Mm. So it's, uh, but uh, aliens didn't like the idea, some of the aliens, and then the struggle started in the alien planet. And uh, eventually, you know, the hero got the chance and he was sent back to Earth, but he was actually chased by some, some alien. Oh, wow. And, and it, yes, so now the alien and the hero are landed on Earth, and I would like to announce my book too. Basically, the book two is released today, actually, oh. <laughs> in a paperback oh. version, in which, uh, in which I told the story that uh, how the human is struggling and how the alien is struggling, trying to stop him. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. It's, it's amazing what we could do when we put our minds to things and how we can accomplish so many different things that we never thought that we could do in the first place. Now that you've accomplished this and you're, you're saying that the next one is really kicking your butt, but you're doing it. How does that make you feel being an accomplished author now? Uh, well, I'm a scientist and it's an experiment for me. I, okay. I <laughs> still unknown and I... I don't have any readership or any followers, uh, but I put my books on the, uh, I mean, I, I send my books and I give away to those people and uh, uh, Goodreads. And uh, let's see how it goes. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. I hear you. It's like, it is, uh, it's like you said, it's chasing. a science. It's a science. Yes, it's a science, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Wow, wow. So I am so proud of you though. Because you didn't back Thank down, you, very much. you didn't stop, and you accomplished your goal. Thank you very much. <laughs> yes, yes, it is. It is a miracle within itself to have such, uh, you know, such a pivot of just different ideas that come when there is a crisis. Um, so, what's next for you? I know you said you're writing another one. Is this a sequel? Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, it's basically a trilogy, so it has three books. Mm -hmm. uh, I already released a paperback of two, mm -hmm. and the third one is in writing. Uh, so, but I think I will finish it before, before December, maybe. Okay. All right. Yeah. Well, we'll be looking forward to that. And what's where can people find it? And what's the name of Chapter the book again? The House of oh, Wisdom. The first book is called the Spear of Destiny. Baghdad, 832 AD. Two months before exploration. It was a marvelously pleasant evening in the glorious mystical city of Baghdad, the capital of the Islamic Caliphate. The intimidating dark clouds were gathering gradually and merrily, and the sky was about to open up its doors for the thunderous downpour of rain. The birds and pigeons were fluttering over the courtyard, located in the middle of the squared building, called Bayt al-Hikmah, the House of Wisdom. Dancing gracefully in the middle of the courtyard was a fountain that had been skillfully designed by an engineer from Asia Minor, using the water of the Tigris River. Four doors opened into the courtyard, each of them leading to a large hallway dedicated to the fields of mathematics, astronomy, philosophy, and alchemy. The recently founded city of Baghdad had acquired a reputation as a center of learning, 
and students from across the known world considered it a huge opportunity, as well as an honor and fortune to travel to this magnificent city in search of knowledge. al Khidr entered the ravishing hall where he hoped to listen to the lecture on alchemy. al Khidr was a 30-year-old man from one of the Berber tribes of North Africa. He had a handsome and charming face and possessed the most gorgeous pair of bright brown eyes, along with a long and prominent nose and a chiseled square jawline. Moreover, he sported a faint brown stubble that greatly enhanced his manly beauty, along with his carved eyebrows. He was wearing a long, cream-colored cotton robe, referred to as a thobe in Arabic, and wrapped around his short hair was an emerald green turban that extended till his shoulder. He continued his walk through the massive seminar hall, which was covered with traditional silk carpets. Ancient oil lamps hung in every corner of the gargantuan hall, illuminating it with their glimmering light. There were only a few chairs present, and those were there only for the erudite sheiks of knowledge who had already finished their lectures for the day. Only Master Abu Yusuf Yaqub ibn Ishaq as-Saba al-Kindi could be seen inside the enormous hall. He was a renowned scholar of alchemy, and he was giving a spellbinding lecture on the subject, which was immensely popular in the entire ancient Arab world. The site was not very different from that of a mosque, though this hall was not meant for praying, but rather used for the attainment of worldly knowledge. There were many people sitting in front of him and taking notes using ink and coal. Master Al-Kindi gave a smile of utmost delight and approval as Al-Khidr greeted him. Al-Khidr sat on the carpet in the front rows, as was his custom, and listened to his master's lecture with complete attention. Just before he finished his discourse on the treatise of Egyptian alchemy and the class was dismissed, he asked Al-Khidr to see him personally later. Al-Khidr was waiting for the hall to empty, as many had gone out, but a few were still inside. He wanted to discuss with his master the reason for the meeting, and he wanted a moment of privacy. As people took their time to leave the hall, Al-Khidr decided to go out and see the changing sky. It was rare to have rain in Baghdad. He was now in the courtyard and looking at the clouds. It definitely must be important as Master ordered me to stay and said I should see him once the hall is mostly empty, he thought. The clouds had a different plan. The second one is called uh, The Cure for Stars, and the third one is called The Revenge of Hathor. Hathor is alien. Nice. I like revenge books. I'm a sci-fi girl. I mean, literally, <laughs> I love action, adventure, sci-fi. I, I love it all. So you just, and now the next thing you have to do for me is try to get some movie right so I can really, really see it on the big screen. I really want to see it on the big screen. I really do. Okay. Oh, I'm, I'm being so. a geek, but it's just, yeah, that's me. That's me. <laughs> I want to read the book and then see it. <laughs> yeah, me too. I want to see it in a movie. <laughs> yeah, see, see, that would be cool. That would be so cool. <laughs> well, thank you so nice. much for being on the show. I appreciate it. We're going to have all your links in the description so people can actually contact you, read the books, get the sample, go to Amazon, things like that. Okay. Perfect. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much for being on the show. And thank you guys so much for tuning in. And don't forget to dare to be different and be a support today. New writer. Hey, I have to give it up to him. What? All right. What about you? What about you? Let's do this. Am I right? Nassim, should they go after their dreams? Yes, I think if you have a dream and then just don't wait, uh, just try to follow it. And, uh, but you have to do it in the right way. Uh, I mean, add, add on elements which you think are missing in the knowledge and uh, just go for it. That's my, I mean, it's like the advice. <laughs> yeah. Like go for it.